how to become more than you are right now. On the next Ray and Sid. Welcome one and all, it's Dare to Be Better. With Ray and Sid. <laughs> you wanna try that again? No. No? You like it? We'll keep it. We just, we'll do it this live. Is, this is us, this we're is always us. raw. All when except, have we ever edited? We've never edited. Ever, ever, Clearly. Ever. Clearly we should be, but we're not. <laughs> we don't, it's too much work. And we were such a circus that we thought we need to take this to the only place that would take us at this point. <laughs> Fabulous. Where are we, Sydney? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm -hmm. For as long as they'll have us. Yeah, they're about done. They're about done, yeah. Mm -hmm. We just got here and I think we just about wore out a yeah, welcome. People were like, and move along, please. please. Move along. Mm -hmm. How are you? I am excellent. How was your flight in? You had a shorter flight than I did. Mm -hmm. I just got up and then we came back down. Right. I had a bit of a ways. A lot mm -hmm. of headwind and uh, I had a crying child on my mm -hmm. flight. Well, see, as a mom, I feel bad for the baby and the parent. If the parent's trying. I don't feel bad for this parent. This the was parent poor planning. Was not trying. No, no. This is poor planning. This was right smack in the middle of the kid's meltdown period. Mm. And... Were they just sleeping? Who? The, the parents? parents? Yeah, they yeah. probably just boozed themselves to sleep huh. and... Uh, Said, I'll let the rest of the people deal with it. Oh. And this is a two-year-old. You can't bring a two-year-old oh. on a six-hour flight in the, like at nighttime. Oh, gosh. No, I no, didn't no, realize it was, it was yeah. at night. You want to talk no bueno? This was no, no bueno. No bueno. Yeah. But we're here. Okay. And the plane obviously landed safely. Yeah. Well, they dropped me out halfway. I don't know what actually happened. Yeah. I hitchhiked the rest of the way yeah. from, from Missouri. <laughs> okay. Good old Missouri. <laughs> I just I'm just making small talk at this I point. Know. That's what we do. The whole show has been small you talk. You know, um, my dad's wife, who's from Germany, mm -hmm. she, strangely enough, she seems to like our show. Really? <laughs> yeah. And she said that she had listened to this show across the country when she was driving, right? Really? And she said at first. She was the one. She said at first, she's like, there's just too much talking about nothing. <laughs> and she That's said... That's the premise of the show, right? She said, but then I figured out if I just sat and listened, because this is a talk show, that you guys actually did get to the point. It just took you... It took a while. A while. But she said, once you got to the point, I was actually intrigued. And so she listened to the entire show, you know, all the episodes, yeah. as they drove across country. Now, being German from Germany she's no nonsense she just tells you how it is mm -hmm. yeah know? they're very very brutal when it and it can to, be yeah. a little it was a little frightening for me at first like I'm like oh no what's mm -hmm. she gonna tell me but when she said no once I figured out this is a talk show this is what you do you're talking and if I just sat patiently and waited you guys actually did deliver you have to ease into it <laughs> we delivered I mean, I wish she was sitting right here so she could tell you people. We do deliver sometimes. Sometimes. But maybe you have to be traveling across the country. I think Completely so. tired. Yeah. And having no other options. <laughs> exactly. But we're back. Mm -hmm. I hope you had a great holiday break. I think we had one show. Well, last week's show was interesting. On addiction. I think that was the last mm. time. We, yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It feels like, you know, when you come out here, time gets a little bit yeah. weird. If you're only like an hour difference from Salt Lake. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm on a three hour shift, so. I feel the same. Yeah. All right, well. Once you move to New York. <sighs> New York. Be, yeah. One day. One day, I know. I'm going to have an apartment there. I I'm going to design the crap out of that thing. Yeah. Design the crap I'm out of it. I'm not just going to have one. 
How well, I mean, I'm not going to have that all in New York. I'm going to design several projects. That's what I'm saying to you. And have, you know, a place so, over overseas, some place in California, a, my Park City resident. No, come on now. Sydney's right. going to be the new Leona Helmsley. Who's okay. that, right? <laughs> Google it. Okay. I think she was a slumlord or something like that. Well, why would you want me to <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. It's a show about nothing, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. We just, Our show? Yeah, we just no, talk. No, that's Seinfeld. Oh. We just talk. Yeah. Talk about whatever you want. What, Whatever you want. <laughs> Anything goes. Yeah. But yeah. what's the email on today? The email? Do you remember? Um, No, I don't. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm all like... Uh, we got this email. Well, there's been a couple... You're the Sorry. new producer. There's been a couple of them but they all kind of you know we kindly tighten them up right and it is about one of them is asking can you be more than what you are right now and i think a lot of people want to be more than what they are right now they just don't know how to become more everybody says they want to be more you know Mm -hmm. i want to be more muscular i want to be fit i want to have more money Mm -hmm. right yeah, but you're right. It, it's just a thought, and then it's like, oh yeah, what's on? What's on TV? Yeah, and when I was in the hotel, <clears throat> there was a group of girls. There's about six of them, probably in their early twenties, and they were talking about manifesting things. Now, there's a little trick here, because just talking about manifesting, do you hear the word talking? Mm-hmm. It's not enough. Right. Everyone can say that they're going to manifest something, but if you don't feel, you got to. Feel, feel what it is that you want because that feeling is what flows out and becomes something. So if you say that you want something, but you don't really believe it, you don't feel it to your core, you have a little doubt in there, you know, you're not, you're not getting that thing. So manifesting, there's a deeper thing to manifesting. So I want to tell you a story. Okay. Okay. Well, before oh. you, before you go into that, um, well, maybe you should tell me the story first because mine's probably <coughs> going to just wrap up what you're saying. Oh. Mine is very succinct, and I think if uh, I gave these people advice, it would be a two-minute show. So you should tell me the story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I'm in this mood where I just want to, you know, <clears throat> get to the point, like my head things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sort I've been of doing like, it since I got here. Yeah, my dad's wife. Right. Just get to, get the, to the point. point. The German. Could you? Yeah. Or, or tell me where to go to seven yeah. minutes into the podcast. Exactly. So you don't I don't need to listen to this fluff. Right. Well, give me some fluff. Tell me okay. a story, Sydney. Okay. So there's this guy, and I he doesn't even know. I won't use his real name, but he doesn't even know he's going to be a part of this story. We'll call him Scott. Okay. That's a nice name. Every Scott I've known has been cute and sweet. Okay. So Scott. Scott, he, he lived in the Midwest. And he was there because his children are there. Right. He took a truck driving job for for a while to, you know, be out there and feed his kids. And um, now Scott is extremely physically beautiful. I mean, beautiful. Even a straight man would go, wow. I okay. think Ray Powers said, wow, when he saw him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Good looking so, dude. <clears throat> Scott... He's in the Midwest, and he tells everyone, you know, he tells his company, no, I'm not moving because I need to be m- near my children. So then uh, the company comes back to him and said, well, we have a great opportunity in Utah. Would you at least go consider it? So he comes out and he applies, right? But this is what's so beautiful is that this man comes out and he goes into his meeting to apply for another truck driving job. For He's a trucker. Mm-hmm. For a major, I'm not going to say what kind of company, but a major company. Right. And when he gets in there, he has this feeling. And and living through inspiration is life, God, and the universe directly connected to you. So when you feel inspired and hopeful and you get a little bit of goosebumps, you need to immediately go with what you're feeling because that is God, life, and the universe saying everything's in line, prepared for what you need and want. But most of us go, mm not a good time I'm really busy so he goes in and they're interviewing and he says to them he he dares to take a chance to be more than what he is right now they said well so you're here to apply for the truck driving position he goes no 
I don't want to be a truck driver. And they go, well, that's what this interview is for. He goes, I know, but do you have something better? What else do you have? So the guy leaves, comes back a few minutes later, and he goes, well, because this, this Scott guy can freaking dress, too. He doesn't look maybe like the type of individual that would typically drive this truck. So he goes, well, hey, would you like to pick up the management position as our, le our general manager in sales? So the guy picks it up. He works there for a few months, something like six months. The position for general manager for the entire company that's all over in the West comes open. Guess who they gave it to? this guy he's been doing it now for five years and obviously making huge amounts of money but what my point is is if he had not believed that he could be more than what he is right now part of believing is asking the question the worst thing that could have happened to him is they said no right. the best thing that happened to him is they said oh let's see what we have it's beautiful it's a beautiful yes. story. When I interview interns for the radio, mm -hmm. I have a series of questions. And the first, you know, five have nothing to do with the job itself. I just want to get a feel for these kids are sometimes out of college or in college, right. 18, 19, 20 years old. Now, I apologize in advance for what I'm about to say. Oh, I look at their resumes and I look at their IDs and they're born in like the year 2002. 2000. <laughs> yeah. And I go, wow, it, it's not even from last millennium. I know. I mean, we're from the last millennium. Shh, shh, shh. Go ahead. Well, that's it. I mean, being <laughs> 25 is nothing to be ashamed of. I know, I know. I'm only 33. What am I talking about? Oh, it's 33. We don't know numbers anymore. But, you know, I try to ease into these things, and I just try to get a feel for where they came from, what yeah. they like, and what their goals are. You know, just long-term, short-term. Um everything from what kind of food they like you know are they vegan because you know, all these kids now are yeah they're vegan they're health conscious a lot of them not enough of them if you ask me but mm -hmm. you know that's another thing too is i try to get people who are health conscious because mm -hmm. if you're watching your diet and you're working out chances are you have a lot of discipline in other areas of your life too mm -hmm. and i'm not saying you can't be overweight and do your job well Right, right, but right. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying in general, you know, if you have a, a disciplined regimen yeah. there, you know, chances are it spills into other areas of your life. I know when I go to the gym at five in the morning, mm -hmm. I don't want to always get up at five in the morning and start pumping weights. Right. But it sets the tone for my day. Right. Now, I'm not only looking for gym rats, I'm looking for people who, you know, maybe they don't quite know what they want to do in 30 years. They want to live a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. fine. Travel when you're young. Right. But when we ease into the actual, you know, meat and potatoes of the job, you'll get a feel for, you know, who is going to be there for a year, who's going to be there for five years. And if the interns is a high turnover, but what do you want to do? Do you want to go into FM terrestrial radio? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a program director one day? You know, do you want to host your own syndicated show? Are you saying to me that you're looking to see if they have more thoughts than just sitting in front of you. Right. Yeah. Is it just going to be a paycheck? Is it just going to be a stipend? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, do you want to Are do Are they this? heading someplace? Right. And you may only want to do radio for five to ten years, and maybe you want to go into TV. You could, right. you know. Right. And I'm not saying you have to you know, die at the position. You mm -hmm. know, very much the contrary. Right. But, you know, what do you want? And do you have any idea of what it takes to get there? And what are you right. willing to do to get there? Right. So, yeah. Scott, the truck driver, wanted to be more. Yeah, he wanted to be more. He wanted to be a manager or, you know, just something more. He wanted to be more. I don't want to say important because truck drivers are the backbone oh, yeah. of America. But, but for his particular life, mm -hmm. right, he felt like he could be more. So, um, I don't know if I ever told this story before, and I don't like to drop names, but I'm going to drop this name. So, for... You know, for decades I've been in entertainment, mm. but as a choreographer and and dancing, you know, for films and tours and such. And when I started off so many years ago wanting to dance, I remember I told my mom that I was going to dance for Janet Jackson, okay? And I just remember my mom just giving me this look like, that is the most ridiculous thing ever. So one day, and again, please, if you've heard the story, 
I tell stories at least five to ten times, so you're 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 gonna be okay. Just I do the same thing. My daughter's like through. I've heard this. Uh, you told me this yesterday, Dad. Yeah. Did I tell? Get some new this information. Spread? I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. You probably <clears> told me <throat> on the way matter. here. I don't know. <laughs> So my mom calls me in one day, and she's like, come in and sit down, and this is back, you know, it, no remote. Right. It was, you had to change a channel. Oh, yeah. So I remember sitting down, and my mom had this red, red um, carpet, you know, with the long tread on it. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. So I sit down. I'm sitting with my legs crossed, and she goes, Janet Jackson's on television with a concert. So I sit down, and I'm so excited. And she goes, now, and she's standing right by the TV, and she says, let's count how many spots there are for backup dancers and she's like one two we get to five she goes there's only five spots really I don't think that you going to dance with Janet Jackson is really a logical thing and I remember looking at this TV going holy crap there's five spots right like it's backfiring you're on looking her. at yeah like there's not like, just two there's five <laughs> and she's like no no you're not getting the point and i go no no i am getting the point there's five spots mom one of those spots could be mine she goes out of millions of people i'm like yes and i remember saying to her at that moment i can be more than what i am right now i know i can be more and where that starts is the feeling i felt it to my core because what you feel is what you become you only be you can only give what you are number one of course. you only become that which you believe you can become you got to believe you can't think it you can't kind of mm, dance around it you got to believe to your core that this is what you can become because majority of people who are highly successful we all know from Steve Jobs on down. People have been naysayers all the time. And if those who are successful listen to the naysayer, no one, we, none of us would be anything. Those naysayers, oh, they're fabulous. They put fire under you. And I remember saying to my mom, no mom, you don't want to do it. You can't do this. It's not meant for you to do, but I can. I feel it in me. So that's my point about people becoming more than what you are right now. It is all starts with not just the belief, but the belief has to be connected to that feeling. And that feeling has to be to your core, not in, on the outside of you. And then that feeling, every time you feel inspired about that thing you want to be or do, you got to move immediately because that's life, God, and the universe saying it's now, not two hours from now, not two years from now, it's now. If more people would move on their inspiration, more people would get the things they want. Now, you can't move in doubt. That's like, uh, that's driving me insane. When I'm driving behind a car, the car is speeding up, but the brake lights are on. That means they're driving with two feet. You can't drive with two feet and be successful. That car's going to break down because you're telling it to go and stop at the same time. Well, here's here's a point, too. You're a mom. You're saying, well, you'll never dance with Janet Jackson. That's a problem, too, is you happen to say, well, mom, thank you for the inspiration. I'm putting that on my bulletin board. And now, you know, if it wasn't a, life, a lifetime goal, well, now it is. Mm -hmm. But how many kids go, okay, mom, you're right. Yeah. And now, you know, I can settle for being, you know, a low-wage employee. Right. And a parent's job is to, you have to balance it. You can't just say, of course you're going to play center field for the Yankees or the Dodgers. Right. You know, you have to say, I want you to get that in life and you should shoot for that. Dream impossible. Mm -hmm. Shoot for mm -hmm. beyond what you can because if you shoot for something out here, well, maybe you'll only get to 90% of it, but you'll it's get a lot some better. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot better than you thought you would yeah. you know, achieve just just meandering through life and, and just coming home and eating a bag of chips on the couch and then going to sleep and just rinse and repeat every day for 40 years. Right. And yeah. a parent has to be very, very cognizant of that, yeah, I think. I think so. And Have, you know, I know we talk about not having a plan B and like, you know, jumping out of the plane and now we have to land mm -hmm. but for you know a teenager for somebody who has to you know go to college 
go to a trade school, it's very, very important at least to have extra skills. Yeah, I think or, that's a know. good way to put it. Yeah. Having that skill set, right? Of course. But I do think also, and again, not every child works this way, but I am that type of person. If you tell me no, mm -hmm. I've said it before, it's going to put fire under me because I'm going to tell you all a secret. When someone says that's impossible or no, you can't do it, you need to run directly for it because that means fewer people are going after it. Mm. Fabulous. If tons of people want to believe that's impossible, you can't get it, this is not what the quote unquote normal person can get, excellent. Fewer people are in your way. Fewer people are going to apply. Fewer people are going that direction. You run, run fast, go after it because now you can kind of create your own thing. You can become because you're not standing in line. It's that fabled road less traveled because it's not easy. There's pitfalls. There's a lot of risk involved. And, you know, you might fail. And I was just talking to somebody this morning. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, oh, you know, this this uh, person showed up for a job and they didn't get it and now everybody knows about it. It's like, well, you can't be afraid to fail. And you certainly can't be afraid to go forward because what if I don't make it? What's the, uh, yeah. you know, what's the, the fallout? What is the fallout? You failed. Well, look at all of these. I mean, the Super Bowl's coming up. Mm -hmm. What if this is how the teams, right? The coaches and the players felt, well, I'm not going to go out and play that game because what if we lose? Yeah, one team's going to lose. Yeah, what if we lose? We well, talked about that before, too, with um, one of the playoff teams. Like, even the Steelers, mm -hmm. you know, they were not supposed to make the playoffs. And they wouldn't have without the extra game and the extra uh, seating in the playoffs. Right. And, they, and someone had said the same thing, too. Oh, you know, I feel my Steelers shouldn't have even showed up because now they were exposed on national TV and they got blown up oh by four gosh. touchdowns. And you would rather have your team not get there. So you complain about yeah. the, your team not making the playoffs. Well, I want to say this. I, I would like to see the face of the doofus <laughs> that just said that because I'm sure he's not doing much in his life. And I don't even need to know the guy because that kind of mindset says to me, somebody who is not believing in themselves, right. typically, it's typically somebody that's not inspired about their own life. Because if you're an inspired person about your own life, you, you give what you own. Now, you notice how Sid just assumed it was a dude who said that. Oh, See shoot. that? You took, you took all the girls <laughs> off the hook. Look at you. It was a guy, by the way. Well, okay, let me just say why. I'm just busting your chops. I know, but I, I did a little math, and I really can't do math, but if we're, we're talking about football, it's usually not women. There's some women that are going to talk football. There's a lot more than it used to be. I'll tell yeah, you. a lot the more, especially back really... east, I'm going to say. Okay. Out in the west, there's... Is that right? Yeah, because it's... We talked about this the other day. It's that family thing. Back mm -hmm. east, you guys have that unity. Yeah. That family thing. Families do what families do together. It's not... Now, if we're talking about the Hispanic family or, or an Asian family, different. The Italians, yeah. Yeah, but you talk about the West as a whole. There is a different feel out here from Utah to California to Nevada than there is back East. Totally. Or, or you know, well, do you call it back East? Like Boston? Bas Boston. Boston. Yeah, that, that, I that say case. Boston, but they say Boston and yeah. Boston. It doesn't matter. There, people are like Sydney. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we get it, Sydney. <laughs> it's back east. But that's what I'm saying. And now, what you're probably going to say is, Sydney, let me tell you who that was that said that. <laughs> I don't want to know because I have a feeling maybe someone close to you. No, it was. Oh. You know, Okay. I honestly don't remember. I think it was probably a friend of a friend, and it was, who knows? I mean, yeah. people say things to me all the day. All, I know. all the day. All oh, day. Yeah. All the, all the live long day. <laughs> yeah. But you can tell a lot about a person, where they are in their own life, mm -hmm. what they're doing, how they're getting there, simply by little statements like that. That says to me, that person is not highly inspired. And I say this to my girls all the time. You must look at who is giving you the information. If you want to learn to be a chef, you don't go take critical information about how to become a chef from, I don't know, 
a welder. Why do I always use a welder? I don't even know a welder. It doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is you got to know who you're taking information from. Are they qualified? Are they highly driven? Are they successful? Do they have inspiration to give? Are they passionate? Because if they're not, ah, let it hit you like oil to water. Let it just drip right off of you because your life does not need to become what their loser life is. Just because they can't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. And if I may, there is more than one freeway to get to New York. I don't even know what you're hearing. There's, there's a couple of ways. Okay, but what I'm saying is we all don't have to take the same freeway. No. We don't. Some of us could fly. Some of us could drive. Some of us could ride a bicycle like my dad when he rode his bicycle at 65 across the country. Did he really? On his bicycle. My point is this. No one needs to believe the naysayers. The naysayers are naysayers because they cannot accomplish let him not accomplish. Good on you. Fewer people in your way. Well, my stepdad, he used to tell us that your thoughts are like food for your brain. Mm-hmm. And I mean, literally food for thought. And if you're putting nutrients in your body, you're going to be strong. If you're putting good thoughts into your brain, you're going to have good results. Right. He said there are certain thoughts that are certain poison. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about something, and I think it was just this profanity-laced horrible tirade that somebody had uh, leaked on live TV or something happened and he listened to it and he said see now if that was food you would die from it (laughs) and we had the same reaction it was the way he said it It was very deadpan about Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and it cracked us up but he was right yeah you know you fill your body and your your mind with garbage and you're gonna have garbage as a result you're gonna have a poor diet you're gonna be lazy and uninspired and you're not going to make it in life, so to speak. And then it'll be, well, I could have done this, but... Mm. And then you're looking for excuses. Yeah. I don't care what you do in life. You know, whatever you do, great. Whatever you don't do, don't make excuses. Mm-hmm. Go, and, go and fix it. Mm-hmm. Because until you die, it's never too late to do anything. Right. So, you know, you can always fix things. You can always correct things. You can always improve. 100%. So instead of making excuses, the energy it takes to make an excuse Mm -hmm. to think something up, you could be out fixing it. Yeah. And I do think a lot of the downfall of getting like making your life better than what it is right now. I can't tell you how many people I'll ask. Well, just like you said, when you're interviewing them, what do you want? Right. Very few people can tell you that. And that's like driving across the country to New York and not having a plan to get to New York. You're just getting in your car and you're driving. You're driving. But now, if I plan to go to New York, now I can take stop offs. I can take different exits. And maybe I hit some place where I'm like, this is freaking fabulous. I don't even need to go to New York. But you would have never hit that destination if you hadn't headed towards New York. Well, we can always ask Scott, who's managing the trucking company. I know. You know, I, I doubt he'll ever listen, but I have to say, you know, he his story really inspired me. And I know he didn't know that it inspired me, other than the fact it's absolutely adorable. I mean, he's easy on the eyes. Easy on the eyes, and he's got a great job. Yeah. Is he and single, ladies? We <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Well, he was at the time. That's how I met him. Okay. He's, he was single. And, and he was shopping. Or, I don't know. Who was shopping? Were you shopping? I was, was shopping, shopping. You were shopping. And we dated a little bit. And it, for whatever reason, sadly, it didn't work out. I don't know why. But my point is this, is that if if he only came into my life to share that story with me, it was it was inspiring because I looked at the man the very first time I met him and he had a swag about him, highly educated, well-spoken, you know, these, all of these things. And for him to decide that, again, we're not putting down truck driving. It is, I mean, your father was a truck driver, wasn't he? Well, no, he was, uh, he was in somebody county and he was, uh, my stepdad was in printing. I had um, a cousin who was a truck driver, 
because you have told me about somebody in your family that was a truck driver, but nevertheless. There a couple. They're my, the backbone of America. Yeah. But my point is for this individual, he believed he could do a little more with his life. And I wish I could share that. I'm not going to, but the sh- name of the company is Nationwide, and oh. it's fabulous. Well, that is a fabulous story. I know. If you can believe it, we have blown through 30 minutes. <laughs> and we left them on a good note, you see that? Dare to be better. With Ray and Sid. Talk to you later. Hey, thanks for checking us out. If you enjoyed the show, like the video, subscribe to this channel, and please tell your friends. We'd also love it if you headed over to daretobebettershow.com for tons of cool photos, extras, and a chance to shop for some sweet show swag. (laughs) Say that five times fast. I could barely say it once. If you keep coming, we'll keep delivering. Thanks again.